Hey guys, Ryan here. Now, even though I know this video won't do as well as the negative one, I still think it's important to show both sides. And I do have just as many good things to say about this product as bad. So let's get started with five reasons why you should buy Soul of Jagokin Dragon Zord. Number five, as seen on TV. In case you hadn't noticed, this thing is beautiful. In terms of screen accuracy, the second staff especially is a standout piece. Though I really love what they've done with a normal chess piece containing a die cast pop out stand. That is genius. Plus the scale of the Dragon Zord both beside the rest of the Dinozords, or indeed the Megazord, is just perfect. When they're combined in warrior mode, you're reminded all over again that the legacy version had shoulder pads that were a bit wrong. You either had to have them a gap apart or angled a little too high. Also remember how bad the Saber 2 Tiger and Triceratops ones were in the legacy version. They were just too small. They kind of vanished beneath the footprint of the Dragon Zord. Also strange memory that stuck with me from childhood. I always really liked to see the red squares of those Zords visible through the kind of sides of the Dragon Zord feet, and here it's really perfect. The screen accurate displayability is just surging through this thing. Number four, articulation. Comparing it then to the Legacy Dragon Zord, which up until now was the best version we'd ever had, you can still see that improvements have been made. The tail articulation especially now has better movement and more articulation, there's satisfying clicking to all of it. There's slight, though not incredible, articulation added to the thighs, which can now be twisted a little bit further out to give you a bit more poseability. It's very subtle. You can't like achieve a pose that would be totally inaccurate, but you do have a little more give. There's nothing new in articulation in the head, unfortunately, though you do gain the ability to open or close the lower part of the mouth jaw. Previously, it was always trapped in a bit of a gorp, but now you have options. This version really just nudges forward what we got a few years ago, but if you missed out on Legacy, and this is your first version since the 90s, you will be absolutely blown away by the articulation now. Number three, let's bring them together. For me, the real win for this set from the first day it was announced was that it's the sequel of a trilogy. It adds new looks to your Megazord from last year. I won't say playability due to one of my reasons from the other video, but these are the best versions of these modes we've ever had. The Dragon Zord in Battle Armor or the Warrior mode you can tell will probably receive the most attention from Bandai Japan and Tamashii Nations and just looks incredible. The Mega Dragon Zord, I was a little surprised at first that it's actually only connected by one clip, but it's actually effective as the hip joints now bend into position and actually stay like that. So unlike Legacy, you're not wrestling multiple moving parts when you try and put them together. Also, the helmet area isn't so tight that it's going to scratch paint off your Mega Zord every time you combine them. It's a really well thought out movement, it feels spacious in comparison, but looking at it face on, it looks really snug, and I think the Megazord face stands out a lot better than it did on the Legacy version. If a bit like me you like the option of having everything on display, you can actually clip on the two main unused parts from Dragon Zord, albeit with two lengths of the tail removed, just like you could on the 90s version. A great touch. Number two, iconic. Tommy as the Green Ranger is probably the height of pop culture understanding of Power Rangers, and I believe in years to come, Soul of Jagokin will probably still be classed as the best version of Dragon Zord we've ever got. I think it's a good idea to support this line, both as a collector and as a fan, because really, we've been waiting for something this high quality for quite a while. We nearly got there with the Legacy line, and we're basically there now with this version. The Power Rangers Soul of Jagokin toys are being made with a lot more care and attention than we've ever seen before, and surely that is something worth putting your money into. And what I would say is the top reason to buy the Soul of Jagokin Dragon Zord, number one, Envy. Think of it this way, not everyone will buy this thing, the price will just put them off. But a lot of people will recognise it. Within the collector world, this thing is quite the prize, and once it's eventually discontinued, as we saw with the Legacy Dragon Zord, it will become even more so. Yes, it is expensive, but I think it's almost a bit like the people that buy designer editions of the Apple Watch over just say like the regular sport edition. A cursory glance from the everyday person might not be able to tell the difference, but for those in the know, they'll know that you only settle for the best. 
and that you probably spend a little too much on your interests. That's it then, five reasons in which I hope to have convinced you to go out and buy one of these things. Do let me know in the comments if you can think of any others. I can already think of one. Titanus, now confirmed for February 2019, so guess I'll be buying that as a birthday present to myself. For now, buy this, buy the Megazord if you haven't already, and just enjoy putting together some of the most recognisable combinations from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And if you haven't done already, go and watch the spiritual successors to this video, the five reasons not to buy it. If you've actually come from there and all this optimism has now got you adding the product to your cart, maybe go and re-watch it and hopefully get talked back down off the ledge. Another thank you to everyone that's been watching, liking, commenting and subscribing lately. It's really helping me to fine-tune my future videos. Until then, see you later.